Welcome back from the break, everyone. And as you know, we're ready to go ahead and start our lesson three. Here in lesson three, we're gonna look at something called the host-to-host -host communications model. This is really, really theoretical stuff, folks, but I hope you're gonna find that we make it nice and fun to learn, and it is gonna be very important to us. And I'm gonna do something that not a lot of CCE and T instructors tend to do, I'm going to make sure you understand why this is going to be so important to you. Why you would want to learn this information, not just for the CCENT exam. First of all, notice there was an attempt at an older model for computer networking. And the problem was this older model featured proprietary equipment. Proprietary equipment means that it's really specific for one particular networking manufacturer. As a result of this, you had equipment from different manufacturers that would not and could not play nice together. So you didn't have the ability to interoperate equipment. What the nice host-to-host -host computer model does, called the OSI model, is it provides a standards-based way to do it where everyone can follow these standards that result and everyone's computer equipment gets to play nice together. The OSI model, we just got to flat out memorize. This is probably a place where you would want to use flashcards and it's also a place where you can go ahead and utilize one of the two mnemonic devices that we like to utilize to memorize this. If you want to go ahead and start from the top down, you can say all people seem to need data processing. That's how you can remember these seven layers of application, presentation, session. Then we've got net, uh, transport, network, the data link layer, and the physical. Or you could go bottom up with please do not throw sausage pizza away. That's my favorite. I happen to be a huge fan of sausage pizza. So let's make sure we know these seven layers in order thanks to that mnemonic device. Again, breaking it down into standardized layers like this is going to facilitate companies getting their network equipment working together nicely. So one of the things that I'm most excited about here is that it ensures interoperable technology and make sure that networking equipment from manufacturer A is going to work fine with networking equipment from manufacturer B. Again, as we go through this difficult theoretical material, should you have any questions, I want to emphasize you simply chatting those questions in to the Q&A console. Now, let's talk about what each of these layers does. The physical layer is by far the easiest one to understand. At the physical layer, we're taking the bits and bytes and we're placing them onto the wire. Or in the case of wireless, we're placing them into radio frequencies. So we're putting the information onto the network medium, whether it be wired or wireless, for transmission to the other nodes. When we get to the data link layer, we're going to actually format the data for transmission onto the physical layer. So the data link layer is all about getting it in the right format for the physical layer. Notice these things could also work in reverse though. Here I was just talking about how the layer two will get stuff ready for layer one. We'll realize it works in reverse. When the information comes in at layer one, layer two is getting it ready for layer three. So keep in mind that this is gonna work when we receive information from the bottom up, and it's gonna work from the top down when we send information. The next layer is very, very important. The next layer is the network layer. This is where we are gonna spend most of our time in this class. At the network layer, layer three, we have a very important protocol at work called IP, Internet Protocol. And it's going to be responsible for these IP addresses that we're going to spend so much time with. 
This is the layer at which a router, or if we're in England, a router works. And this again is going to be somewhere where we spend a lot of our time. Up at layer, let's see, let me go back there. We want to go all the way up now to layer four, the transport layer. At the transport layer, we're going to send information unreliably using something called user datagram protocol, or we're going to send information reliably using something called transmission control protocol. You'll notice that there's a technology out there called TCP IP. Well, now we can see it's actually a suite of technologies, isn't it? There's transmission control protocol working at the transport layer, and it works in conjunction with internet protocol working at the network layer. Those two protocols are used so often that that's how the suite of protocols got its name, TCP IP. Two protocols in the suite that are used so often, they actually became the name of the suite. The session layer. At the session layer, we're going to manage the sessions that are running between different applications. At the presentation layer, layer 6, we're going to format it so that an application can use it. Like in the case of a photograph that we have online, we might format that as a JPEG at the presentation layer so that some nice graphics application up at the application layer can view that JPEG. So there's our seven layer OSI model, and we're going to be discussing it in greater detail as we move throughout the course. And we'll see it again and again as we move throughout the course. For example, do you remember when I spoke to you about IP being used at the network layer? Well, IP at the network layer, we're going to see again and again as we interoperate with our equipment. For example, here we have a Cisco router, and I'm going to do show IP interface brief, a very, very popular command that we would run on a router. And sure enough, we can see that there is indeed, let me, let me go to the right uh, screen here, sorry. We can see there is indeed two different IP addresses configured on two different interfaces on this particular router. So here we can see layer three in action. We said IP is at this layer, and here we go to a Cisco router, and we can see we have different IP addresses. We're going to be in routers and switches a lot in this class, and I want to send out a very, very quick thank you and uh, a heartfelt thank you to one of our partners. One of Stormwind Live's partners is none other than Proctor Labs. And all of the demonstrations that you'll be seeing me do in this course, I'll be utilizing Proctor Labs uh, router and switch equipment. So a huge, huge thank you out here to the guys at Proctor Labs. In fact, I'll have an account that's available throughout the day, so send me an email, anthony at stormwind.com. That address again, anthony at stormwind.com. When I'm done with my equipment, uh, I can get you on the equipment up here at Proctor Labs. No sense it sit there not being practiced with. They do just such an incredible job here. As you can see, you go to their homepage and you have the ability to rent at great pricing, routing and switch equipment, voice equipment, wireless equipment, security equipment, service provider, even old ATM equipment is available up there for rent. Notice I went in and rented equipment, so if I go to connect to my rack, I rented route switch equipment, and now you can see I've got about 11 hours and 22 minutes left in my session, and you see how easy it is to get to any of my routers and reset them and things of that nature. So we want to thank, a heartfelt thank you to our partner Proctor Labs for making my demonstrations in class today possible.